So Seps Dilip was one of those that we would have graduated this many people. If you remember, this class should have been held last year, if you all remember. But then because of logistical bottlenecks, we couldn't have it. So I went to renegotiate our prior action on this one. So the question I was asked was, how many people you expect? I told them, by the way, that you are graduating in the first quarter of next year. We'll have this big, elaborate program. So they asked me, how many persons you expect to graduate? I said, 59. So they asked me, but how many do you have going to the training in Bikano at level 4? I said, 59. So as though I was making a mistake, one of them said, one of them said, but it means you say 100% pass rate. I said, yes, I didn't miss my words. I meant 59. So there are 59 of you here, and I'll put my neck on the line for you. Yeah. All 59 of you are going to be graduating. And what's good about our graduation is whatever happens at the Elections Commission and whatever happens in the Supreme Court for run off or run on or rerun, whatever run it will be, by that time we'll have a new government. And one of the first business of the new president will be to hand you your certificates. Yeah. We will make sure that you know, this is what happens. I will hope that Paul will be here at that time because, like the parliament just said, Paul has been one of the pillars and Paul, we are forever grateful to you. You know, I went to South Africa a couple of months ago for this high-level procurement forum. You know, and the forum, it turns out that everybody was just about bragging. You know, so the person will stand out and will say, all the things that they do. So many of the things we've done in Liberia that it is still struggling to do. So at there, everybody saw me, you know, and our colleague from the Ministry of Finance, who like, but we feel not doing anything here, we're like, anybody that's struggling with. We're not doing it one, anybody that's struggling with. You know, so my sector, I want to talk. I just spoke half hour on. Yeah, everybody, everybody started coming. So how you doing it? I said, you got to come. <laughs> you come to Monrovia, you know. But it's a good thing, and I think it was a good thing that we started this program. Because the parliament just said, once we can produce the cadre of individuals who are professionally certified, I think it serves not only the government, but the society as a whole. You know, so that's why, you know, when I hear, oh, there are three people in UNDP who are, you know, trying to finish and not ask for their own. You know, then I hear somebody say, oh, somebody came to the office and said they started the SIPs on their own. But they're not in the price, so we put it in. You know, the more we get, the better. Because in the end, it's like you that really benefits. And I would really hope that even the people who are playing the support roles as we come here, you know, we all say, I want to encourage all of you. Get involved. Register. I mean, come in. We'll put your name there. So that you don't just come around while we're here, and then you go back with us, and then you come back the next time you go again without getting anything out. It's really very important. I'm very happy uh, for the sake of the press to really share some of the statistics we have for this group because the numbers are really very good. Like I said previously, we have altogether 59 participants, 23 of whom, or 39%, are women. And that's a very big thing. Of course, then you subtract, you get a man, right? So I'm not saying a man's percentage. I'm really more interested in the female percentage. So we got 39% of participants in this workshop are women. What that means is that our women number is going up. And women, as you know, is one of the empower, empowerment of women is one of the key sustainable development goals. So we are very happy that we're beginning to get these kinds of numbers. And we've structured this training in such a way that even people from out of town, not just those who are based in Monrovia, but we're getting 8% participation of people who are due to station outside of Monrovia. And this is very good. You know, I mentioned that in SIP3 when I uh, uh, spoke briefly, and then some journalists came over to my office and said, but that percentage you gave is so small. I mean, you shouldn't be talking about it. I said, no, but you got to look at it in a general scheme of things. They said Monrovia is so small. Monrovia takes 92%, and the rest of the country takes only 8%. I say, yeah, you look at Monrovia and the rest of the country in terms of geography, but look at it in terms of distribution of government offices. You see that more than 95% of government offices are located in Monrovia. So obviously, even if we're doing an even spread, the larger proportion will have to come from Monrovia. So it's not because Monrovia has a smaller land area, so you think we're serving a smaller population, you know, a smaller area and giving them more. No, 
The thing is, that's where most of the offices are. How many offices are located in the counties? So it, it will be pro proportional. So if we're doing 8%, it shouldn't appear to you that 8% is such a small number. It's not a small number. This is because of our inclusive policy. That's why we're getting 8%. Actually, when you look at it in terms of per capita presence of uh, offices across the country, we're giving higher allocation to counties than we are giving to Monrovia with the 8%. I just thought you know, it's important to put that in perspective. Otherwise, 8% gets a look too small. I give it too small space to, to know that's not the case. The counties are getting more if you compare to the number of offices in the counties as compared to the number of offices in the movie. So this is really very good. Now, uh, my uh, uh, advice to you is I'll be here with you every day, hopefully every day. So let's wait, you know, you know, because on a hot city, you're really bored now, you know that? Well, you have wait until Friday. <laughs> eh? You have wait until Friday, we're going to get last test. You're feeling the test in that evening now, the time will really shake the camera. <laughs> But for the rest of the time, let's focus on doing our work. And as we always tell you, don't wait until the last video. I'm sure by now you got good experience. I've had cases where some of my staff, uh, uh, ED, you stay late to me. You got always work late. I say, yeah, we work late every day. So the last time I purposely decided to tell you, I said, no, I'll leave very early today. I mean, you should have seen the pandemonium. Now, don't wait until you get that panicky, you know. Or so now you submit your work, then you worry. What the time? I'm getting to you. Like, no. It, I think it's good you start early. So that way, if there is any glitch, sometimes you send an email, it doesn't go. Sometimes it's stuck in your outbox, you're not even aware. You know? So all of these things can be taken care of when you start your you know, preparatory work. And Paul has also indicated that SIPS 4 is more challenging. So what that means is beforehand, he's not trying to scare us, he's not trying to scare you. But the point is just be forewarned so that you can start to do your work much earlier. Because I can't really afford to go back, you know. That prior action team with the World Bank I started with is actually, those are things that we must do to be able to get grants that we are supposed to get from those partners. If we don't, they impact on how much assistance we can get. So I've committed that Liberia will produce 59 graduates next, uh, uh, first quarter of next year. So it's really important that all of your part. If your own part, we will not get the money. If we get the money, the you JFK is supposed to get so when you get sick, you go there, we will not go there. You know, the road that we're supposed to build, we will not build the road. You know, so it's really important, you know, national development now hinges on your performance. So you can't set up for anything less. So please, let's take it very seriously. And next year, hopefully, I will have the opportunity of sitting inside the next president of Liberia to be able to award your